so for me, uh, you know, I get I get the opportunity to work on lots of different kinds of race vehicles, land speed race vehicles, uh, uh, off road trucks, uh, sports cars, and for me, a radial drag race tire is much more like a tr traditional tire in other forms of motorsport because the the sidewall of the tire and the construction of the tire is uh, is so stiff and so so strong that it basically takes the springy or sponginess away that you have with a traditional drag slick. So where a traditional drag, uh, drag slick acts like a, uh, almost like a clock spring, if you looked at it from the side, you have to wind the spring up, but you have to not overwind it um, and try and hold just the right amount of twist in the carcass of the tire so that you get optimum grip. With, with a radial tire, it's, it's very stiff uh, so you don't, you don't get that spring effect. The spring is there, it's just a much higher spring rate, so it takes a lot more force to get it to do that. Um, and then of course, because it's not spongy, the track needs to really be sticky compared to what it would be with a traditional drag slick. Um, so the, the advantage of the radial is that there's effectively no tire shake. I mean, you can still get them to shake, but mostly they never shake the tire. But there's also a very small margin there. You, you put it right on the limit of the grip that it has, and if you go beyond that, it just blows the tire right off. So a slick, because it's sort of springy and or spongy, is almost like a damper in a way. Uh, and so if you make a little bit of a mistake with a slick, if it doesn't just shake, it will recover and still go down the racetrack. With a radial, if you make a mistake, it just blows the tire off and doesn't go anywhere. And there's almost no amount of power management that will cure that problem if you make a big mistake. Almost every car out here with the radial tires underneath it is running some, some form of traction control and power management. And it takes a combination of all of those things uh, to make the cars consistently quick. That's the same as a, as a slick, uh, a car with a slick on it, but the difference is the way that the power management is used with a slick versus the radial tire, just because of the fact that the radial is, like I said, not got that springy sponginess that a slick has. So for me, it's honestly, the radial is easier to work with than a slick. It's really difficult, at least for me, to work with a slick and try to get it right to the limit of the grip that it can provide without making it shake. What you see with the radial racing compared to say traditional slick racing is a lot of motion in the suspension. There's a lot of uh, things going on in between runs, moving weight around in the car to try to balance the car better. Um, and obviously they don't have a wheelie bar in the back, but mostly what you're trying to do is keep, you have enough power in almost any one of these cars to wheelie anytime you want to put enough power in if the track's good enough. So the trick is to not wheelie, obviously, um, and also keep the rear tire planted at the same time. So you'll see the rear of the cars separate, the suspension tries to pick the back of the car up. There's a lot more motion in the suspension of the cars than there would be if they were, I mean, some of these cars are actually ProMod cars just with a radial tire, but even if you watch them launch, they don't look like they look when they run with a slick on the back. So there's a lot more of that stuff going on than, than typically you would be doing with, say, something like a ProMod. Um, and if you completely miss on the setup, I mean, if, if the tire can handle at any given point on the racetrack, let's just say a thousand horsepower, and you try to use four thousand, it, it, no amount of power management is going to fix that. So it's a combination of, of putting just the right amount of horsepower in to have enough to spin so that your power management can keep it right at the, at the speed that you want, acceleration rate that you want, to keep from blowing the tire off. You know, if you went out there and made a slippery spot on the on the track, it would probably just blow the tire off because you're you're the way that these cars run. Uh, you know, they might they might leave the starting line right when the trans brake comes off, maybe at uh, 1,200 horsepower, and three seconds later they have 4,000 horsepower in them. So that rate of change of power uh, makes it really touchy. Um, and the fact that it's eighth mile also, you don't get the whole back of the racetrack to make up for any mistakes you make early. So it's really exciting. It's really fun. Um, and for me, I actually, it makes more sense to me. It, it's more like what I'm used to doing traction control wise, um, like sports cars and, you know, standing mile cars, land speed racing cars. It's similar to that for me. The more times you try it and the more, the more you poke at the, uh, 
you know, the more you poke it with a stick, the more you figure out how much it'll actually take. And so uh, that's been kind of just an ongoing process like every other form of racing and every other tire. It's just that, uh, you know, you get a lot of horsepower to work with these days. And so when people figure out how to get it on the ground, it makes a huge difference in how the cars run. Yeah.